good morning uh, everyone so first of all <coughs> please bear with me for my voice uh, thank you uh, mr menon uh, so for giving me this opportunity um, so uh, we met a few months back and uh, we were actually discussing a, a wellness proposition for our organization so uh, so mr menon had said why can't you share some of your perspectives uh, you know that's how uh, this thing uh, had come up uh, in fact i also see a session on wellness uh, now as a major hr responsibility but even before that you know you have an hr professional here uh, talking about uh, you know uh, a culture of well being and and why should uh, corporates take up wellness right so and and i think that's the uh, that's the whole thing uh, rather than talking about corporate responsibility because corporates like ours have already taken it as our responsibility and we have started on a wellness journey so i thought it will be nice to share our wellness journey you know this is more of cognizant perspective on uh, how and what we do uh, kind of on our wellness journey and again uh, uh, more to start with uh, you know creating a holistic holistic picture you know about the whole wellness itself and this is what uh, we have to share i just start with a small dilbert cartoon which just talks about wellness programs to save money and then you know and then looking at the big picture of wellness program so what exactly is is the real big picture right so why are we talking about wellness right so so we live in very exciting times you know where change is the norm i'm sure all of you will agree with me on this business models we've got uber like business models we've got the oyos and we've got uh, uh, you know the newer business models the nature of work is is transforming from where we were 10 years back 15 years back to where we are today the skills required you know uh, there are shocking surveys that actually reveal that the skills that are required from 5 years 10 years from now or even uh, the the kindergarten kids you know are expected to work on some new skills which are not even existing today so what are we heading towards uh employee demographics of course uh, there's a big blend of uh, you know baby boomers millennials we have gen x gen y is coming into the workforce technology touch points of course there are technology touch points for everything you know the moment you finish a conversation i think somebody is already googled about the entire thing you know getting to know way advanced about what is happening in that the work home divide line i think this is very very uh, you know very uh, very interesting because the divide line is very thin you know because we work from home uh, we work from the office and and there is no divide line there is no clear divide line and i i could actually here uh, the director of stpi talking about uh, you know the it professionals re ready to go beyond the 8 9 hours of work and i think this is very true because uh, the home work and uh, the work home divide line has become very very thin so employee well being has has become a competitive advantage today the way that i i see it you know as as a head of rewards as a hr professional that companies have organizations have started looking at wellness or well being employee well being as one of the important spectrum in their rewards portfolio so why are we saying that so this is because employees are living and working longer and they are less healthier than ever and this is something that all of us will agree and key skills becoming harder to find i think there's there's an emergence of new age skills that the digital era and the kind of apps and uh, skills that people bring in awareness of stress and mindfulness is growing i think this is there's a common awareness about everybody's health i mean at least the millennials that we have they talk more about their individual health they are more interested in what the organization is providing as a health benefit you know in fact we live in an era where you know we have a generation which is actually taking care of their aging parents as well as their growing kids right and we also have the next generation of kids who have actually joined our corporates who are actually talking about their personal individual fitness personal wellness and a lot of these things and of course technology is making it easier to monitor and manage health right be it a blood pressure or be it a diabetes or be it any other medical condition you know we have gadgets and apps to tell you what the medical condition is about and 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 we have technology which is actually taking us into a newer dimension so so this is how 
we looked at our you know wellness journey right so our wellness journey was primarily based on six design pillars which was to look at wellness as a very very holistic manner uh, focus on a real long-term culture change you know uh, we do we started doing wellness interventions in pocket we tied up with particular vendor for a particular area and uh, then we realized that actually it needs a broader spectrum it needs a, it needs a culture change it needs a change in the way that we are handling and the way that we are doing things participate employees <coughs> in design and implementation so I think this is a very important aspect because everybody uh, you know in the industry brings in in some kind of inputs as to what they want and how they want to see it uh, moving ahead so the participation of employees in all the design and the programs that we Im design and implement is, is the key customize offerings and give employees the choice and I think we believed in developing that hundred or two hundred odd programs and then giving the choice to the employees to pick and choose as to what they want to perceive with or what they want to continue with Remain flexible and use data to evolve continuously. I think this is this is the trend that we are seeing. So we have a big bunch of data, you know, coming in from our insurance. We have, uh, you know, our other health partners indicating on the kind of health issues that our organization is facing. Where are we to focus? You know, because uh, we have a mix of talent. We have uh, a mix of generations working alongside and then you know the data is actually helping us decipher a lot of these programs and then uh, design some new programs that are relevant for our uh, workforce and last but not the least and of course I need budgets I need funding you know and, uh, and and which is very clear that you know use clear measures to demonstrate our return on investment I think this is this is a big ask from our leadership and I think to a greater extent we are able to satisfy the ask by showing them a return on investment on some of our health programs and how it has benefited the organization, how it has helped increase the employee morale, the employee productivity and a lot more aspects of uh, the ROI. So Cognizant Live Well and this is our wellness brand as we call it as and we call it as our open face approach to wellness. So we believed in, in a complete dimension of wellness which is, which is holistic in nature covering occupational wellness physical wellness, emotional wellness, we talked about mental wellness and, and aspects around emotional wellness and aspects, nutritional wellness, financial of course, financial literacy, financial awareness is, is something which is, which is actually uh, of, of a lot of prominence uh, to our younger workforce these days, altruistic, right, and the community, the community is more the social aspect of how people want to see themselves in the social network, how they want to see themselves with the community that we live in and of course last but not the least the environmental so we looked at our wellness to be uh, an open face approach covering the eight dimensions that I'm talking about here and I think this is a this is a broad based approach to wellness you know which actually helped us influence a behavioral a cultural change in the way that we wanted to drive things so just touching upon uh, <coughs> each of these aspects occupational wellness we talk about the safety first programs you know the future of work you know how employees want to see you know themselves in the workplace you know the ergonomics that we talk about the kind of chairs the kind of tables the kind of uh, work environment that they are uh, that they are using every day you know can we bring about some change in that the health checkups the risk assessment the HRAs uh, in, in partner with our insurers actually helped create awareness among employees as to you know about their individual health and and create programs to address individual health problems physical wellness of course we we do tai chi sessions in the work floor right people are too tired to get off from their seats and and get to a common area to do a yoga or a tai chi session so we brought the tai chi and yoga trainer to the floors right so we talked about on campus gym and there's a lot of motivation required to make somebody get up from their seats and go to the gym, right? And there are sports carnivals, there are city marathons, uh, there's workplace Tai Chi, right? So you have the Tai Chi master coming into your desk, all that you have to do is get up for the 15 minutes or 20 minutes, follow instructions from the Tai Chi master and then do some simple stretches and workout exercises at your own desk. Yoga sessions, uh, stairathons, very, very interesting. I'm sure a lot of corporates are doing a lot of these sessions uh, 
emotional wellness, right? So we celebrate work and that's how we've themed ourselves. We celebrate cognition, we celebrate every aspect of employee well-being in the organization. Stress management, we do have our employee assistance programs which help manage stress both at work and outside of work because we strongly believe that the work-life balance and also the problems that come in their life affect the work. So it's more the life-work balance the way I put it. Uh, dependent care, right? Dependent care, as I said, we are seeing the generation which is managing elder parents as well as younger kids. So there is a need for dependent care which also kind of, uh, you know, puts a lot of emotional pressure on, on some of these workforce that we handle. So we've, uh, you know, packaged some of our dependent care programs in our wellness, nutrition, of course, cognizant health challenge, which is one of our marquee health challenges that we do every year, nutrition counseling, healthy food focus, and of course, uh, free health drinks and health campaigns. Financial wellness, something to do uh, more about financial literacy, you know, flexible benefit plans, instant financial aids, tax planning work workshops. Of course, we do partner with some of our banks and other financial consultants to help create this financial literacy for our employees. Altruistic. <clears throat> this is very important and I'm sure every organization is doing this. This is more of the corporate social responsibility which we have plugged in and Cognizant Outreach is one of the la world's largest corporate volunteer efforts and then we're looking at giving opportunities to our employees for making meaningful contributions to the society. And community of course, Yama groups and social platforms, cultural committees, committees, uh, communities of expertise. Uh, and last but not the least, the Go Green campaigns, right? So we have the Go Green campaign, the zero waste policy, the recycling policy, and this is how we have looked at our wellness program in a very, very holistic way, starting from occupational, physical, emotional, to an environmental wellness. And this is uh, some of our snippets uh, from our uh, wellness journey. So we talked about different dimensions of wellness, you know, uh, some of it being the cognizant health challenge. You know, this is something I would say, you know, I would clearly boast of being the largest digital health challenge that has happened in the industry. And this year again, we are targeting about almost about 50 to 60 percent of our workforce being part of this challenge. Emotional uh, wellness counseling, you know, we do this for individuals as well as larger projects, you know, which are into high amount of stress and all that. Outreach, of course, our CSR initiatives creating an impact. And child care benefits, you know, more uh, from a dependent care perspective financial literacy campaign that I that I talked about. So some of the early benefits that we could see, you know, uh, there is a there is a mandatory helmet policy, there are zero incidents reported on women's safety, right? There's a 25% reduction in C-section and miscarriages, of course, thanks to the insurers that we work with who have got specific programs laid out, uh, you know, uh, for the healthy pregnancy, uh, you know, of, of our women workforce. Uh, almost about 5,000 kgs lost during our health challenge and this is actually inculcated the behavior among our employees because interestingly we see about 10 to 15 percent of our workforce wanting to continue their health pattern and their health style or health lifestyle even after the health challenge is completed and this is a big success for us and people are wanting to hear back from us as to when the next challenge is starting off and this is something which we have done in a very gamified way so that, you know, there's a lot of participation, there's teamwork, and then you also use it as a very, very important employee engagement lever. And of course, 30% reduction in the cases uh, registered in our medical centers. We do have medical centers in all our uh, campuses, and then there's a, there's a clear 30% reduction in the in the incidence of cases that have come to our medical centers. Because often people, you know, as, as I, could hear, you know, I mean, the doctor could prescribe a medicine, right? And it's it's more your your own self-realization of what you need at that hour. And I think, uh, you know, I think that's more important. You could easily walk up to a medical center and get an aspirin or or or, or a saridon or a crocin and then, you know, keep yourself uh, away from that sickness. But it's more a realization of how people wanted to look at their lifestyle and how they wanted to uh, bring in a change in their lifestyle. Some key learnings uh, from our wellness journey, which I thought uh, is, is worth sharing, right? We really need to care. And of course, uh, our execs and managers uh, should lead by example. So we have a lot of our senior leaders who are marathon runners and who are 
uh, who are actively into uh, into into sports and actively into uh, and of course this this actually creates a lot of motivation to the teams and I think the top down approach works. Uh, openness and honesty is is the secret source. Participating employees is a win win and it's it's not just about getting those programs laid. It's also about making your employees participate and and what can you do to make your employees participate and I think that's the that's the win win. Of course, gamification and social tools, you know, can work uh, wonders. You know, anything which is gamified and presented in a manner that your employees are going to take it up and, and immediately go behind that and see how they could realize the benefits, uh, you know, coming out of that. Listen and improve constantly. And I think over the last four or five years, and this is a journey, as I said, I think we've taken about five years to kind of mature ourselves and come to a state where we are today. And I think this has been a constant perseverance to kind of listen to our employees, you know, listen to what they want and, and how we could improvise on some of our programs. Of course, uh, that's the last thing that I had. You know, it's not just about being the best and we also wanted to be better than what we were, you know, in the previous years. So uh, thank you uh, for this time and thank you for the opportunity.